In this video, we meet Jodie, a woman who uses Auslan. She's interviewed sitting in an office wearing an overshirt with a print in amber, red, and black, her glasses perched on top of her head. A voice from off screen provides an English translation. Jodie is shown in conversation outside a building at the University of Melbourne and walking across the campus. Text. Act 1. Who is Jodie? I'm Jodie Barney. I'm a deaf Aboriginal woman from South East, Northern Queensland and Northern Queensland. I'm from an Aboriginal group called Biragaba and Yurangan. And both of those are from Northern Queensland and Fraser Island, the coast there. Where I live now is in Victoria, on Yorta Yorta country. And I live in Shepparton. I love living in the country. I'm the senior woman in my family as well. So as an Aboriginal woman, those who are elders, I need to look after my children, my grandchildren, my siblings, their children and their grandchildren. So I have a role. Really, I grew up without knowing that I was really deaf until I was eight. My mum has a brain injury and I grew up with other family members and other people who had special needs as well. So my context and my Aboriginal background really meant that we didn't have labels for anything. Professionally, working in the disability space came much later because my qualifications first were as a chef. And then I worked in education with deaf children. And following that, I worked in community, helping with complex needs among Aboriginal people, where there was a lot of communication breakdowns, where people didn't understand their diagnoses and how they could find help through the justice system. And that just led me to setting up my own business. And my business is called Deaf Indigenous Community Consultancy. One day I can be training, teaching. Another day I could be teaching signing, helping another group of people. I could be writing, I could be building frameworks. A whole number of variety of things. Text, Act 2, Identity and Responsibility. My mum taught me that I had to live in four worlds. Being deaf, the hearing world, the black world and the white world and there was no excuse for not integrating them. I had to be able to shift the way I was to fit. And there was no excuses because that was part of my family and my life over generations. I had to accept that's who I was and to accept that those four parts of me were me. There's so much othering in our community where people need to label people, put them in boxes, and they don't have the belonging in terms of connection and understanding who they are and what group they come from. So I need to educate family members, children, community members to be assertive and know who they are, who their identity is, so that they can search and talk with elders and community members. So that they can do that research and find out who they are. It's very important for somebody's mental health to be able to do that. If you don't know who you are, then you're isolated. You could be exploited. A whole range of reasons could become quite traumatic, especially for women with disabilities in our community. And this year, I've been focusing on my leadership development and social equity for deaf Indigenous women in Australia. I do project work to help women who are in remote parts of Australia to understand Auslan and deaf identity and deaf Eastern Aboriginal women who only have Auslan skills and don't know their cultural heritage, bringing those women together with those that do. Sign language is my passion, but Aboriginal sign language is my responsibility. Text, Act 3, Creating Positive Change. Jodie walks past sandstone walls reading a document. Here at Melbourne University, I've been part of the Murrah Indigenous Business School. 
And I'm also an alumni of the University for the Atlantic Fellows for Social Equity. University life is hard, especially when you start out asking for help and for support, which is for me, interpreters and note takers and technological assistants. It can be great, but the higher up you go, you don't get as much help. So in 2006, I was working with an organisation. And one day I was working there. I was qualified. This female manager said to me, I think you're at risk working with clients because you can't hear. So I resigned on the spot. I went back and I studied. I got my business degree and I set up my own business, Deaf Indigenous Community Consultancy. I'm helping. I'm helping increase knowledge amongst people and expertise on the ground in their communities. So I can then leave. And what I leave is people with either qualifications, skills, their needs being met, capacity, awareness, opportunities, human rights. I leave that there when I go. And when I'm back to check, slowly, I can leave and not have to return because the community's self-sufficient. So I'm very fortunate. Text, do your thing. Text, Women with Disabilities Victoria, empowering women 2022-2023.